What's up, family? Once again, it's on. Hey, okay, so North Korea has threatened the U.S. once again. And this time, the message seems a little bit more personal. It goes like this, y'all. North Korea on Thursday threatened the U.S. with a super mighty preemptive strike that would blast American and South Korean military forces to ashes in the latest escalation of tensions and rhetoric between the reclusive rogue regime and the West. In a statement carried by Pyongyang's state-run newspaper, the North Korean government also warned that the U.S. should not mess with us. In the case of our super mighty preemptive strike being launched, it will completely and immediately wipe out not only U.S. imperialist invasion forces in South Korea and its surrounding areas, but the U.S. mainland and reduce them to ashes, the statement said. Trump, during a joint press conference with the Italian prime minister, said hours later that U.S. was building our military rapidly and was in very good shape to handle any ongoing situation. We're going to see what happens, he said. Poyang's blistering remarks came a day after Vice President Mike Pence threatened North Korea himself, saying that America's swords stands ready if the regime were to use conventional or nuclear weapons. Those who would challenge our resolve or readiness should know we will defeat any attack and meet any use of conventional or nuclear weapons with an overwhelming and effective American response, Pence said Wednesday in Japan during a 10-day trip through Asia. Pence, for his part, has repeatedly said that all options are on the table to deal with North Korea. And on Monday, he traveled to the tense, demilitarized zone dividing North and South Korea, where he warned North Korea's leaders that after years of testing the U.S. and South Korea with its nuclear ambitions, the era of strategic patience is over. Senior North Korean officials responded by accusing the U.S. of bringing the countries to the brink of thermonuclear war and vowing to conduct more missile tests on a weekly, monthly, and yearly basis. White House officials, however, have stopped short of flatly saying that military action is being planned. Now, some of you may ask, what can North Korea, North Korea really do to us? I mean, here's the deal. The U.S. is looking for China to step in. The U.S. really don't want to go in there messing with the, these people, man, because they know China is more aligned with North Korea than they are the U.S. And I don't think the U.S. really think that they can just go inside of North Korea, bomb North Korea, and China stand by idly. China has too much of a stake in North Korea. China, for its part, is relying on North Korea to serve as a buffer between themselves and the West because South Korea is right there next to North Korea and South Korea is on the U.S.'s side. And North Korea, I mean, China needs North Korea to stay intact so it can do its dirty deeds. You know, it's kind of like China throwing that rock and hiding their hands, but, you know, at, but North Korea is the rock or should I say bolder. Now, how potent is North Korea's threats? You see, here's the deal. Like, North Korea is not likely to be able to reach the U.S. mainland, but it can definitely cause damage in the region because North Korea... I mean, South Korea has like 28,000 U.S. military personnel over there, all right? 
The U.S. has 40,000 uh, military personnel in, um, where is it? Uh, Japan. All right. And then we have uh, military people over in Guam. We got a he heavy military presence in Guam. And also we have a territory in the Philippines. So North Korea can go in and cause some damage over that. I mean, it's not unlikely it's very plausible that they can go in there and cause a lot of damage. So I don't think that the people on that side of the water just got their kick, feet kicked up and saying, oh, North Korea ain't going to do nothing. I mean, dude might have a death wish. He might be thinking to himself, man, I don't care how I go down. I don't like the U.S. I don't like their policies. Therefore, I'm going to do whatever I can to destroy them. And if I'm destroyed in the process, so be it. But I'm going to destroy the U.S. I'm going to destroy their interests. I'm going to destroy their allies. I'm going to do anything that I can to hurt them. And I think that's dude's mentality. I, like I said, I don't put anything against my enemies. I don't put anything against my enemies, foreign or domestic. <laughs> Now, here's the thing. If North Korea goes after Japan, then the U.S. is obliged to step in. They got to help fight because the U.S. signed an agreement post-World -war, War II with Japan in the case that Japan is ever attacked, that the U.S. would help them out. So if they touch Japan, the U.S. got to go in. Now, here go the thing. This is the way I see it. This dude, uh, Kim, Kim Young Young, this dude is like a three-year-old with a straight razor. He ain't likely to hurt nothing on this side of the water. But the thing about him is that you know, any three-year-old playing with a straight razor is going to cause some type of damage. And that's kind of like what this guy reminds me of. You know, he reminds me of a little kid playing with a razor, a straight razor. You know somebody going to get cut. It's going to be blood. It's going to be blood. A lot of people keep saying, man, North Korea ain't going to do nothing. North Korea ain't going to do nothing. We'll blow them out the water. We got a lot of warmongers in the U.S. I mean, they got warmongers over there too, but we got a lot of warmongers out here that quickly forget, you know, that we had the same mentality when we was talking about going over there messing with Iraq. We had the exact same mentality. Y'all remember how that turned out? At first it was, yeah, yeah, let's get them, let's get them, let's get them, Earl. And then it was like, man, let's get the hell out of here. So it goes back to that old saying. If you don't remember your past, then you're bound to repeat it. And I don't understand why we so damn hard headed, why we can't learn from our mistakes and grow and move on. That's what I do as a human being, as a person on a, on a personal level. That's what I do. I do not make the same mistakes over. I'm going to make mistakes. But I'd be damned if I make the same mistakes over and over and over again. We tend to do that on every level. We just forget. Real, we got a very, very short memory when we think about our past, when we think about things that we did that got us in the bad situations that we've been in. Like even when you look at race relations in America. How soon we forget. America's going backwards in race relations, not forward. Here we are, 50 years later, removed from the civil, civil rights uh, movement, and we're right back in it. It's like we're right back to square eight. We're not advancing. 
How do a people not advance and be okay with not advancing? How could a people, how could a country say that they're for the people? And then you look back and the people are still going through the same shit that they went through 50, 60 years ago. How is it possible that our kids are fighting the same battles that we fought and we're fighting the same battles that our mothers and fathers and grandfathers fought? That shit is stupid. But that's where we are. And that's what happens when non-humans, when non-humans rule the world. When we allow non-humans to be in leadership positions from the U.S. to North Korea, you're going to have a situation of people who are creators of problems with a solution against humanity. That's basically what you have. People who are creators of problems with a solution against humanity. And that's why we're in the situation we're in. And that's why everybody is on the edge. This whole situation is unpredictable. Nobody really knows what's going to happen. If you think that America just going to be the big bad bully and it's not going to be any casualties, you out of your mind. If the U.S., Go at North Korea. It's going to be a lot of blood. It's going to be a whole lot of lives lost. And I do predict it'll be more lives lost than it was in Iraq and Afghanistan combined. You don't want that. No more talk. What the haters talking about? Yeah. Thanks.